Hi everyone, this is Robert again. Let's go ahead and get started. It's great to see everyone. I know we've had a, a two week break here. So again, it's uh, great to see a good strong crowd. So let's go ahead and jump in. So again, this is our last session of the social media crash course for government communicators. And today's session is social media records management. And it's funny, I was talking with Anil earlier. We were realizing it's probably not the best session title to get communicators and government super excited, but we actually think it's incredibly relevant to the role of the government communicator. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. So this is very tailored to the communicator's role. So again, as housekeeping, all attendees are on mute. As always, use the question function for questions. I'll be monitoring that uh, during the session today. There'll be time for Q&A both throughout the presentation and at the end. And then, as always, the webinar is recorded. And in the follow-up email, I'll include the link to the webinar as well as any resources we discuss. OK, so I'd like to introduce our speaker. So our speaker is Anil Chala. He's the founder and CEO of Archive Social. He speaks a lot on the subjects we're going to talk about today. In fact, was just speaking last week at 3CMA, has also spoken at G, uh, GSM Con and a variety of uh, state associations. Um, quick word about Archive Social. I think you guys know us by now, but we work with agencies around the country. These are the issues that we work with them uh, with, specifically social media records management, large cities to small towns. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Anil. Well, Robert, thank you for the introduction here, and a pleasure to join everyone. I'm really excited about this crash course. I've been keeping up with the previous sessions, and as Robert said, this really touches, these, these topics really touch on the, the issues and the questions and the, the information that we get from the agencies we work with. Now, when I got together with Robert on this session, I asked him what I could possibly add beyond my, my typical spiel around records management, and she said, he said, gave me the advice that you would typically give a presenter, which is keep it light, keep it fun, make them laugh, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I was quick to remind him that I don't really know that many records management jokes. So to what he was saying, what we really want to do here today is make this relevant to all of you. We have a title around records management, uh, but why this really matters is because there's, there's some, some issues and situations that you need to be aware of. So I'm going to flip this agenda around. While I would love, love to make you laugh, as a word of warning, what's probably going to happen is you're probably going to get a little bit uncomfortable with some of the material that we're covering here. And it might look a little bit scary uh, in the sense that records management really boils down to protecting your agency and dealing with the risks, the legal liabilities. And so the real agenda as we kind of break apart this, uh, scare the pants off you, what that really boils down to today, you can look at this presentation in two parts. The first part is us evaluating, reviewing, uh, discussing the legal situations, the, the scenarios that create risk for your agency as you're using social media and really creating awareness to what's happening day in and day out with agencies just like your own. And then the second part of that is talking about action items, being a resource to you here on how you can avoid lawsuits, protect your agency in the event of a records request or a lawsuit. Again, all that boils down to, to proper records management. And also our goal here is to be educational to you. Uh, while we do work in this space, I want to lay out the issues at a high level so that you're agency has a course of action to take. So that is the agenda here for this session. Um, again, it is around risk, it is about liability, but I want to be really clear about this. We are not by any means trying to scare you away from social media. In fact, we want to do the op opposite. We want to remind everyone that all of these issues exist because of how important and critical social media is to how you function as an agency. Uh, it is the front line of communication today for government agencies. I know that you've uh, discussed many examples of that in the crash course thus far. Uh, so we'll keep it simple by saying it has transformed the way that you, you, you serve and protect your citizens. So because it's so important, we need to take the right actions, particularly around records management, to protect your agencies so that, one, your agency is not at risk of, 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 you know, of money liability, your reputation liability, but two, your social media use is not at risk. And so let's break down that topic um, here in this session today and I want to start by actually asking you what you're concerned about. Uh, and then we'll use that to guide the discussion moving forward. So our poll here right now is around what risks are you most concerned about with your current use of social media. We're going to give you a minute here 
to uh, pick, pick, a, pick out of these options and pick the one that's most concerning to you. Hello, Hello can can you, you, this, this is Robert. Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us now? Can you just type in the question window to hear us? Okay, let's see here. Bad echo now. Okay, how about now? Sorry about that. I appreciate that. Patience here. Okay, clean now. There we are. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right, Anil, why don't you share your screen and just work off my mic here. Well, as I said, there's all sorts of risks out there, including technical challenges. So we appreciate you bearing with us through that. And uh, for those of you uh, uh, who've been trying to keep up with where we are on the slides, we're really in the agenda setting portion of the presentation. So a good time for us to lose audio and get it back. Uh, thank you again for letting us know. If it happens again, we appreciate the heads up. But to, to really break down this issue on the poll that we, we just went through, again, about three, more than two-thirds of you are concerned about comment moderation, third-party comments, uh, public officials being uh, an area where there are a lot of issues and concerns, and certainly public records. Those are the topics we are going to talk about. And so why does this topic, again, matter to you as a social media communicator, as a PIO, social media manager? Uh, you obviously... Uh, you look at records management, a lot of us do, as something that, that's happened for a long time. Oftentimes IT has handled it or records managers handle it. So why you? Well, it does boil down to the fact that you are on the front lines of your social media and it impacts your use of social media. It also impacts you if there's ever a request for social media because you have the keys to your Facebook account, your Twitter account. You're likely the, to be the one to be involved in producing social media records. And what are the scenarios in, that, that we've seen that create the need to produce records? Well, it boils down to three, essentially three buckets of, of, of activity or three types of situations in which we've seen 
uh, records requests come in and need to produce records. The first is basically around the way that you use social media day in and day out. And we'll dive into this a bit more, but things like emergency management, answering questions from citizens and so on. The second bucket deals with the, the moderation issue. Uh, this often comes up in terms of First Amendment concerns, what a citizen says on your site, your ability to hide it, remove it, uh, your own decisions to hide and remove what you've said. Um, so that's an area where we've seen a lot of interest in social media records and a lot of records requests and lawsuits. And the third area, a reminder again, so social media works. It provides so many benefits because it's this open forum. But because it's an open forum, there is that user side and user generated content has led in many cases to records requests and, and uh, difficult situations for agencies. So we're going to break these apart a little bit more uh, to, to, to again lay that message that social media records management matters and it's something that in a lot of agencies is being driven by the communications team rather than a back office team. So let's look at that first bucket of, of, of situations, scenarios, reasons for records requests. And it comes from the fact that, again, social media is a frontline communication, is how you serve your citizens today, is how you protect them. Uh, we don't have to look really any further than the events of these past few weeks with the hurricanes this year uh, in Texas and in Florida, and how critical social media has been for, for getting people help, uh, answering questions, informing them, and so forth. Uh, last year, uh, we, we had some uh, various incidents in the country, some of them deeply troubling around uh, mass shootings and terrorist attacks. But again, the silver lining being that social media was there to protect everybody uh, or get the information out and protect as many people as possible uh, and let the social network virally share that information. Uh, and then beyond that, day in and day out, uh, again, this communication is there to inform and serve the citizens. And so answering their questions, clarifying information, this is all important activity that's being documented on social media and therefore it's important to keep a record of it. Now I want to dive into an example here, a brief case study of, of, of where this is really, really uh, where records management has really proven out to be uh, important for an agency that's protected an agency. And so this is a situation coming out of California, the Santa Barbara Police Department, uh, obviously they're involved with public safety, uh, crimes and other, other you know, sensitive topics. But this was a situation where they were simply following through on a city program, which was a gun buyback program. Now, gun ownership, gun buyback, these are controversial topics. And so it led to a lot of conversation on their Facebook page. And as this was happening, as they were about to run this gun buyback program, a records request came in asking for all of the communications related to that program. And records requests can come from anybody. And sometimes it's okay, you, you may get by by saying, well, we, we don't have that or we can't produce it. In this case, it came from the NRA, which is obviously very interested in, in how this program is being run. And they have every right to, to request that information and make sure it's being run well. And the city you know, really didn't want to take any kind of chances with messing up that production of records. So fortunately, they had started a, a free trial of, of, of our archiving solution to having our product. And in that free trial, it got this records request was able to, they were able to produce it and they ended up publishing this case study with government technology that talked about how had they not been managing their records and archiving, they would have been spending hours sifting through their Facebook page trying to weed through this really hairy set of conversations and would have likely missed something. So again, records requests can come in for any reason. We've got number, a number of case studies. This is just one highlighting uh, what can come out of what, what's a pretty normal event in your city. The second bucket I mentioned is around com comment and content moderation. Uh, again, this often comes, most often comes up in regards to First Amendment rights. Uh, and so as, a, as an agency, you're posting communications. You may be editing, changing them. That, that, that's, that's a form of moderation. But more often than not, what's controversial is when you moderate what the public is saying to you. So maybe someone's being critical. Maybe they're using profanity. Maybe they're they are promoting their, their commercial interests on your page. And so there are good and bad reasons, uh, good and, not, and or valid and not so valid, I should say, reasons for, for moderating. That is something that we covered in our first session here in the crash course. But regardless of the reasons, uh, people are looking at this topic and there's a lot of news around it. And it's leading to uh, interest in the, in the media, it's leading to lawsuits, it's, it's leading to records requests. And so we've listed here in the bullet points a bunch of different ways that this happens. Uh, I'm going to shortcut it straight to uh, an example here uh, that, we, that we've seen out of the news. And again, I really want to focus on this First Amendment issue around getting comments in from a citizen. Maybe you posted something and you got some comments that 
either violated your policy or perhaps didn't, uh, if you're still working on your policy and sorting that out, and someone in your organization decided to hide it or remove it, um, that can lead to lead to potentially a lawsuit, or a complaint, and then potentially a lawsuit. And so we've seen this quite often in the news uh, and for years. So the first example we had there, 2014, the San Diego Sheriff's Department uh, was receiving comments that were critical of the sheriff, and the sheriff's office decided to delete those comments on Facebook. Uh, the man ultimately filed a lawsuit, and again, the worst case scenario here in terms of, of social media, uh, the sheriff's department ended up taking their Facebook page down. So all of the benefits, all the citizens that were benefiting, everybody gets impacted in a negative way. The benefits go away because this issue popped up, and it wasn't handled as well as it could have been. They didn't have a great policy. Record keeping plays a role in that and so forth. You fast forward, and this has happened time and time again. Beach Grove uh, in 2016 in Indiana, a similar situation. This animal sh shelter in, in Mays Landing, New Jersey uh, in 2017. Both of these incidents, by the way, are incidents where the ACLU got involved. So again, it is, this is an issue that has been around since government's been using social media, but it's grown in its importance because everybody's recognizing how important your use of social media is. And these interest groups like the ACLU are getting involved. And, and these are groups that um, will really, really, really push the industry towards tackling tackling this, this, these problems, both in terms of the policy that we've covered in the cat crash course, but also when this when these situations happen, you need to be able to explain your side of it. So maybe you did have a clear policy, you consistently enforced it as we've guided you in this crash course. But then how do you prove it? Well, you can't do that without record keeping. And so this has gone on and on, even to uh, again another example from this year, uh, fr from June, where. Uh, th there are some, some missteps that might happen as well where, in this case, the Sheriff's Department said, hey, no negativity. Well, again, as we covered in our, in our social media policy session, that's not necessarily the best practice to, to, uh, to moderate based on opinion. In fact, you really want to avoid that. Um, so lots of incidents here coming out of that spectrum. And what's really aggravating that uh, is the fact that public officials are using social media. Again, this is a very positive trend in that. Very, very good that public officials from the President of the United States down are using social media. It's creating a lot of transparency, a lot of accessibility, a lot of accountability for public officials and government. But it does aggravate the issues. Uh, and, a, and a big part of that is that oftentimes public officials are not treated uh, the same way as the rest of the agency. So they may be running their own private social media account and not even thinking about their, anything on their, on their own Facebook page being a public record even though the fact that they're communicating something official makes it a public record. And then also we found that a lot of agencies separate themselves from the public officials. They may give them some guidance, but a lot of the housekeeping around policy, archiving, that, that ends up being applied to the agency's presence. And then the public officials are told, hey, you need to handle this too, but they end up not necessarily doing it. So they don't have the training, they don't have necessarily the support to do it. And it puts them in a bit of a disadvantaged situation. So a really good example of this coming uh, out, of, out of Pennsylvania just last month. Uh, Pennsylvania has a right to know law, just like every state has a public records law. And uh, a records request came in for the mayor's Facebook page asking for deleted content. And the city, and it came to the city, and the city actually said, well, we're not responsible for this because we didn't help create this Facebook page. We didn't administer this, this page for the mayor. This is, this is the mayor's page. Well, this ultimately went to the Open Records Office in Pennsylvania, the official uh, just to, to, to ter office for determining whether this is truly a, a, no, a valid open records request or not. And they, they ruled that it was a valid request. And in fact, the city was responsible for assisting with this because the mayor was using this page to conduct official business. He was communicating in a way that was relevant to the business of the agency, receiving communications relevant to the business of the agency. So again, this profile might look kind of personal. It's for the mayor. The URL is dbrown17201. That sure sounds personal, but it's a public official conducting public business, and that's all that matters. And so this is a very clear ruling. Ruling, And they said it was immaterial, again, that the city didn't have a lot of involvement with this. Ultimately, record is record, and the policy is the policy, and you need to fulfill it. And finally, we have this third bucket uh, that we mentioned around user-generated content and information going viral. It's really great that social media is an open forum. That's really the beauty of social media. And you get a lot of good input from your citizens uh, in a highly engaged community. Oftentimes, your citizens help you with the negativity because they'll respond back to the negative folks. But because it's an open forum, you just don't have control. And users can post content on your site that, that 
can get that can cause controversy, can cause something to, to go viral. Uh, but they can just post something anywhere, honestly, that can get you in trouble. So I want to give you an exa example of how something that would seemingly be unrelated to your agency can pull you in a situation that creates risk and actually uh, requires you to think about records management. And this situation comes out of Florida, out of South Daytona, Florida. This is a town of uh, less than 12,000 in population. Uh, we've been working with them for a few years, and they have a very light social media presence, maybe a few comments a week. Well. One day, uh, while the city was doing what they needed to be doing uh, and, and, and everything was smooth in, in regards to the city's presence, a woman decided to post on her Facebook page, her personal Facebook page, a photo that most of us find uh, incredibly offensive. And it was this photo that you may have seen because it became national news of this, this poor dog's mouth being duct taped. Really poor taste and, and really morally crosses the line for most people. And for that reason, her friends on Facebook began to share it and criticize her for it, and it went viral. Now, again, all of this stemmed out of her own personal page. Now, when this happened, people noticed that this woman had in her profile that she was out of South Daytona, Florida. Well, the crowds then came. They came angrily, and they came to the city's Facebook page, and they said, South Daytona, Florida, how did you let this happen? This is animal cruelty. Why aren't you doing anything about it? Again, they had nothing to do with this posting. It wasn't even on their site. But because this woman had an affiliation with South Daytona, the city took the brunt of the response. And this small team was overwhelmed with this incoming response. Now, to their credit, and again, to reinforce the message around social media being so important, they actually use social media to communicate quite frequently on this topic with a lot of transparency, giving these citizens an update. Uh, and what ended up happening is that this woman was not at all in South Daytona. Her, the location tagging was wrong. It was stale on her profile. She was actually in a different part of the country, uh, but South Daytona's law enforcement was able to work with law enforcement around the country and find her, and she was arrested. So as they communicated about this and provided updates, again, to the power of social media, it was a 180. It went from being criticized for, for, for just not doing anything to thank you for everything you did, uh, even though this didn't happen in our city. You, you, you stayed on top of this. You kept us informed. and really appreciate you providing these updates. So again, social media one out in the situation, but it did cause a lot of pain and a lot of struggling uh, in the short term. And it generated more than 24,000 comments for this, you know, for a pretty small social media presence. And during this time, the national media was making records requests for this content, uh, largely informal records requests, but they were using the social media content. And South Daytona has actually done a case study saying, thank goodness we were, we were keeping records, we were archiving, because I, I, I would never be able to sift through thousands upon thousands of comments and produce it, but I had my records management strategy in place. I was archiving. I was able to produce it. So to summarize, again, these different ways, the, the fact that day-to-day -day you're using social media for important reasons, the fact that content's being moderated, uh, your own content, your citizens' content, all of that creates risk, and certainly the fact that users have this open, open forum to contribute, and, and they can trigger something um, without you actually ever, ever doing anything wrong leads to the, the inevitable, inevitable need to produce social media records for your agency. And again, we, when we talk about records requests, a lot of times these requests aren't necessarily formal requests, but they're internal records requests that you still need to produce the records for, uh, or they may be legal discovery requests. So we talked about the, the webinar being in two parts. We're going to transition now towards solving these challenges. We want to get a poll from the audience to see where you are today. And so the question here now is, how is your agency keeping your social media records? So we'll let the results here stream in. And it may be anything from manually archiving, which is taking screenshots or copy and pasting, relying on the networks. Maybe you don't know. Uh, maybe you're using a solution that's multi-purposed and, and social media is an aspect of it. Or maybe you're archiving. We just want to get a sense of this, and then we'll be able to, to take the rest of this content and guide it in the direction that's most relevant to all of you. And we have uh, a majority of responses in. We're going to give it five more seconds here to see uh, as many responses as we can uh, get come in. OK, great. Well, we've got about 80% of people responding. We'll go ahead and take a look at the results. And uh, by a large margin, about a, almost half of you say, I'm not sure, and we don't have a plan. So thank you for coming here today. Our goal is to give you a plan and give you some options here. Uh, a number of you are either relying on the networks, about 20% of you are relying on the networks, and now about 13% of you are, are manually archiving, which means taking screenshots. 
Uh, and then for those of you who are using a social media archive, about 25% of you, it's really great. Thanks for taking action. So for the 75% of you who either don't have a plan or, or are kind of in, a, in a, a basic position today, we're going to spend some time talking about record keeping and give you some approaches uh, and really try to give you the guidance of what to think about. When you, this is not a simple light switch that you turn on and uh, in terms of anything we'll do as long as we have some record, we're good. The kinds of records that, that are created on social media are difficult to manage and so you really need to think about those challenges. And so we're going to walk through those challenges and give you guidance on how to find an appropriate uh, record keeping strategy. Now, one more thing I want to hit on this is that I've talked about all of this risk, uh, the legal risk and the, the situations that can create records requests. Uh, and throughout that, I kept talking about public records. Uh, but some of you may be wondering, well, what is that public records requirement um, when we talk about record keeping? Because ultimately, understanding this is really important for buy-in in your agency. You might leave today going, we need to keep records. But for your attorney, for, for your other decision makers and stakeholders, they may be saying, well, there's risk, but there, everything has risk. We're not really sure if this should be the priority. So I want to talk about public records because this is a mandate. This is an obligation that, that all agencies need to think about and, and, and must fulfill at some point and of course sooner rather than later. So this starts with the records law. There's a records law in every every state in the country um, and they all actually look a lot very similar to each other. They basically refer to communications that are related to your agency biz, business rather than sent communication or received, received communication. The key phrase though is regardless of physical form. These laws were written decades ago but they were written in this very uh, open fashion to account for technological change. What this means is that if you receive a crime tip and you get that crime tip uh, on paper or if you get it in an email or if you get it in a Twitter direct message, it's still a crime tip. A crime tip is a crime tip and it's an important record. So the form is not so is not going to distinguish whether you keep a record or not. Uh, and in most states, we've now seen the records bodies come out with guidance interpreting that existing law and being very, very clear and specific about social media. A great example here is in California in 2015. California's Records Information Management Office came out with their, their e-records guidebook around social media saying uh, this is what makes social media a record. These are the situations that it becomes a record and then you must have a plan to export records from a social media site. You can't rely on that site. You must have a plan to export it from a social media site. So again, this guidance is coming, across, coming out across the country. In fact, most states have already come out with this guidance. And so if you're wondering what the guidance is in your state, uh, we've done the heavy lifting here. We've actually taken a map of the United States and for every state provided a link to the latest guidance in regards to your records requirements, social media, and the guidance from your state so that you have clarity to what your state is requiring of you. You can go to this bit.ly uh, and then click on your state and get that guidance. So of course, if you have any questions, uh, please, please come to us with those questions. We're also, of course, taking questions in this webinar today. So uh, do submit those in the GoToWebinar control panel uh, in the questions field. And we will take some time at the end to address any questions you have around records requirements, content moderation, or anything else we've covered thus far. Now, with those records requests, uh, there's the law, legal side of it, the academic side of it, and then there's the reality of it. One question that we often get, uh, and, your, and your attorney and your internal stakeholders might ask, uh, is, well, when have we ever seen a records request for social media? But we as a company, originally when we started working with agencies in 2012, we honestly had not seen uh, much activity around records requests for social media. We expected it to happen, and many agencies did. Fast forward to 2017, and we have dozens upon dozens of situations in which uh, uh, agencies that we work with have told us about records requests. They don't always have to tell us because they can handle it themselves, but they do tell us, we find out, and it's quite interesting how records requests come in, whether it's through emergency situations or any of the other circumstances I discussed before. Now, in your agency, you might still be in the position where you have yet to receive a records request that explicitly asks for Facebook or Twitter content or content from any social networking site. What I want you to step back and think about, though, is how your social media is touching everything you do and how that's intersecting with the records requests you are receiving. And what we find when we ask agencies this question is that more often than not, agencies have been receiving records requests for social media, they just hadn't realized it yet. And what I mean by that is that the language around those records requests, language like all notifications of the street closure or all emails and communications, encompasses social media. And most of these, most of these, most of these then lead to a situation in which social media was used to communicate about it. And so if, you're, if you had a street closure and you provided updates over Facebook, 
all notifications would then include your Facebook content. And so that's a really big realization for a lot of agencies that these requests are coming in. And more and more, the people asking for that content realize it that, hey, you've provided me something, but didn't you talk about this on social media? Where, where are those records? And I want to give you one example on that uh, coming out of California because uh, there are specific scenarios in which you get records requests. But this one's really interesting because there wasn't actually a specific uh, situation that happened. This is a records request around the idea that the city needed to manage social media records. And so in San Mateo, this came out of April of this year, uh, a woman filed a lawsuit saying, hey, the city's using social media, the mayor's using social media, the police department is using social media, but in your social media policy, I see nothing about records management. And so I'm going to file a lawsuit for this because you're not managing social media as a record. So for the core principle that we're talking to you about today, this, 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 this lawsuit came in. Um, and it was actually a really big deal. And I, when I say there was no specific incident, the woman did cite some, 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 some areas of that social media use that are a cause for concern. One of those being that the police department had their Twitter ha account hacked and all of the direct messages had been deleted. And so she called out the fact that something important could have been lost because since they were deleted, um, you know, the city would probably not be able to produce those anymore. So again, this is, this is emerging case law, and it really speaks to the, the awareness across the industry of how important social media is and how important of a record it creates. The issue is that most agencies are not in compliance with records laws today, uh, relying on the networks. We'll talk about this in here in a moment. Will not make you compliant with the records laws. Um, the, the, the social networks, um, you know, you can go to them again. We'll talk about this in more detail. But they, they really hold no responsibility for this either. So you could subpoena them. You can ask for it. But again, they, 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 they're allowed to lose that your data. They're allowed to have information deleted. And that's okay by their policies. They have no obligation to you. And the fact that you're already receiving these requests um, and it may not have realized that yet really puts you in a position where this is something that you want to act on as immediately as possible. And I want to also po point out that uh, with the current president, uh, we see a lot of news. We see it almost weekly around around his Twitter use. He's probably the most prominent public official, the most prolific public official using social media today, drawing a lot of awareness to this. Um, and so even the president of the United States can't escape records laws. And, and speaking to that, uh, the, the previous president of the United States, the 44th president, President Obama, uh, his team made it a priority in January of this year to archive social media. As the team was dwindling down, we actually got involved with this and helped capture the eight years of social media content from the entire presidency, from over 100 different profiles, including at POTUS, the first lady, the vice president, and transfer that to National Archives. And so we were deeply involved with this. It was quite striking to me to see that this team had dwindled down, this president was out the door, but having these social media records was incredibly critical, that they made it a priority that had to happen before he left office. And if you're interested in any of that work, please do take a look at our website, archives.com slash White House. As a, as a citizen, we've made all those records openly available for you to review so you can access that part of the nation's history. So let's get back to solving this problem. So again, talking about public records here was uh, a tool in the tool set to get that internal buy-in because this is a, a requirement that a lot of agencies are not yet meeting, an obligation that a lot of agencies are must fulfill. And let's talk about the challenge of archi archiving now and managing these records. And what I want to do is actually paint a picture of a social networking scenario. Most of you, I imagine, are on social media. So this, this is hopefully going to resonate quite well with what you're seeing. But it also does lay out the records management challenges. And so we have this example. We took Instagram as an example. We often talk about Facebook and Twitter, but there's a lot of social networks that are, that are important to you. And so Instagram, you post a photo. In this case, a city has posted a photo of vandalism asking for, for tips. And they received a comment uh, rather quickly on it that it wasn't necessarily, it was, it was more of an empathetic comment, but it wasn't really related to, to solving this, this issue. And then imagine that six months go by and suddenly a comment shows up. And the comment says, hey, this has happened again. Um, and it's actually calling somebody out for it, saying, uh, hey, you, this, this user has been bragging about this or whatever may have happened in the background. It's calling somebody out for it. And mentions this other user, the user actually that gets mentioned comes back and says, well, how dare you falsely accuse me? Uh, don't put my name out there. And so then the original user decides, okay, fine, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and edit my comment, removes, removes that mention of, of the other user. Um, and then the other user who got called out decides to go ahead and delete his comment because he really didn't want to be called out on this, on this post. And so again, this is something that relates to a post that you put out there, and it could have been six months ago. 
but it involved these posts, these edits, deletes, and it's this changing nature of social media day in, day out. Citizen comments showing up, being edited, being deleted, maybe t in a time fashion unrelated to your own actions. That dynamic nature of social media that really speaks to the records management challenge is also the importance of keeping those records. So the reason why this is challenging is that, again, this is happening without your involvement. The comments that showed up on these old posts, typically social networks don't tell archiving providers that these new, these new comments have showed up on, shown up on our old posts. Uh, these social networks don't necessarily re always report edits. Uh, so, uh, sites like Instagram, for example, don't man maintain any kind of version history. So this comment got edited, and, and if you're too, too, too late to the game here, you might have missed the original comment. Uh, when something gets deleted, you may not be able to get it again. You may not even know that it got deleted. So again, these all, this, this, this scenario really unearths a lot of the challenges around records management. And one that I want to call out very specifically is this notion that, that, that content can get deleted. Uh, I know, uh, I think it was about 15% of you are relying on the social networks today for your content. Um, and the other 50% that, or 40 or so percent who weren't really sure, you're probably also relying on the social networks today. And so one of the things that we want you to take away from this is you cannot rely on the social networks for your records. Uh, and a big part of that is that data content can get deleted. Now, oftentimes when we've talked about this, we've heard from agencies who've said, look, we don't delete anything, so we're fine. Uh, an agency might even have a policy that says no one can delete. What gets missed there is that, first of all, people don't always follow the policy, but secondly, that your citizens can delete at any time and you might not even know it. And deletion is a really big problem because once it's deleted, uh, the social networks do not produce it. In fact, Facebook has a guidance on their site for law enforcement that says, if you want to is issue a subpoena, you must do so before content's deleted. So deletion's a big deal. And we at Archive Social decided to study it and get a sense of the magnitude of this problem. And here in July, just, just, a, just a few months ago, just two months ago, we did a study across our customer base. We selected 500 customers at random. Our only criteria was, let's look at customers that had at least one deletion. We took 500 of them at random all government agencies, and we said, how many total records were lost? And the number that's been staring at you now on the screen for, for a moment here, it says 214,841. That's more than 400 deletions per customer in, per month, more than 10 a day, right, per customer. And so that's a staggering number. And when we break this down, it's not that it would be, all of this came out of the big cities that we work with. In fact, we have a number of agencies that are less than 30,000 in population that had more than 100 deletions in one month. So this problem affects virtually every agency. In fact, when we stepped out of the 500 customers, out of our entire customer base, over 1,000 agencies, 95.4% of agencies had at least one deletion. And what's happening again is that People are deleting, whether they're, they may be in your staff, and more likely than not, the citizens are deleting content. They're removing what they're saying to you. They may be sending you important information that's of record value, deleting it. They may just delete their Facebook profile, and that pulls out all of their content. This information is dis disappearing. It's information that you were obligated to maintain. And because it's dynamic, because it exists on Facebook and Twitter, because the social networks can't be relied on, because their social networks are hard to search, uh, all of these different reasons, you do need to take records management into to your hands. So what does that look like? And we've kind of hit this message a few times, it's worth repeating, you can't rely on the social networks. Um, one quote we wanted to share, this came out of Arizona from the actual records analyst that said, Facebook has no records management capability. That, that's a really important message. And when you look at a lot of the state guidelines that I mentioned across the map of the United States, a number of states have come out with guidance that says, Social media creates public records. It's our responsibility to manage as a public record, and we can, and I'm paraphrasing here, you cannot rely on the social networks to maintain this for us. You have to export it. So what can you do? Let's talk about solutions. And some of you are already in this bucket of manually archiving, taking screenshots. And I really want to applaud you for doing that. No, no, uh, no record is the worst situation. So some record is better than no record. And again, if you are in a legal circumstance and you have no other records management place, at least a screenshot. If you see something controversial, sensitive, you, or if you're going to delete or hide, take a screenshot. That's something that you can start immediately today. Um, it is a complete stopgap, right? Um, if, you made, if you actually kept this up as a process, if this became your records management strategy, how would you search a thousand screenshots a year from now? Um, if you went to court with a screenshot, and someone disputed it and said, well, I think that was Photoshopped. How would you stand behind it? 
Right? So it's not great, but it's better than nothing. And ultimately, you can't rely on it as a records management strategy. So what do you want to look for? Um, again, as high-level guidance, because of the, the challenges that I've shared today, that example around the vandalism, the fact that social networks allow for deletions, here are the four criteria we ask you to think about for your records management strategy. Um, and, and really why they're important. So frequency, well they're important because someone could post something and delete it. And so if you're slow to keep get it, capture a record, you might miss content that you were supposed to, records that you were supposed to have. The fact that it's deleted doesn't mean you're not responsible for it anymore. It was communicated to you, you were supposed to manage a record. So if it got deleted, you still need to have that record. Comprehensiveness is about really having the details of social media. Social media is incredibly rich. Today you can broadcast live videos on sites like Facebook and Twitter. The social networks keep adding new features like emojis, uh, nested comments, multiple videos attached to a, a comment or a post. So those details are really important. You'd be really wary of any vendor technology solution that just hand waves it and says, oh yeah, we got Facebook. No, don't worry about it. We have Facebook. Well, what part of Facebook do you have? Facebook just, just changed the way they style all the comments and, and, and now you can, you can post these additional content. Do you get that? So you got to really think about that comprehensiveness. The authenticity is about this being a record that you can stand behind. If you do end up in a legal situation, as many of our customers have had circumstances where they've had records requests, you need to be able to stand behind that record. It needs to be authentic. It needs to reflect exactly the data from the social network. You need to be able to prove it. Um, you have to be wary of systems that might capture a view of the data and then transform it or store it like, or, or use web scraping or uh, you know, store it as an email. You really want that authentic record. And then context is, is, is what I think is often overlooked by, by vendors in this industry, but most important, which is, can you actually produce the information you were asked for and can you make sense of it? Can you replay a Facebook conversation with 300 comments from three years ago? Can you replay a Twitter timeline and give that to the records requester so there was not this confusion and this back and forth? And that's where social media archiving comes in. Uh, regardless of who you choose to work with, what you want to look for are these criteria, capturing content in real time, again, that frequency issue, uh, again, real time is not every few hours, not every 30 minutes. It's, it's within minutes or seconds. Um, we have seen that most edits, deletes happen pretty quickly after the post. So you want near real time, or or what we you know brand is as real time as it gets, uh, within seconds, six seconds or minutes. The authentic records again, a system that really proves to you that it's getting the data directly from the social network, does not transform it, is not web crawling or web scraping and taking a partial view of the data, but you know, a true authentic legal record. The ability to reconstruct it and replay it. Um, you want to be able to do this in, in, in whatever s solution you're using, but you also want to be able to reconstruct it for your records requester. So if, if you have, have to perform a records uh, request that gives you 400 different results in your, in your records management solution and 35 of them are comments from the same conversation. You want to be able to reconstruct that back into that one conversation so that it makes sense to you and the party that's requesting it. So again, eliminates that confusion, that potential risk. And then finally, really think about your records management strategy as, as evolving with social media. Um, whatever approach you take has to, has to take, take into account the fact that social networks keep changing. They have downtime. They have all sorts of limitations and issues. These networks are not built for archiving. So you have to think about records management and archiving solutions um, in terms of how well they overcome the limitations of social media. How well can they somehow get you that authentic record that can be reconstructed despite the fact that Facebook doesn't have any built-in features for, for archiving. So that's what you want to look for. And with that, I'm going to transition it back to Robert before we take questions. Okay, great. And I'm going to let Anil take a second just to look through the questions. And um, Anil, uh, just... Um, your screen is still showing, yeah. Um, sorry. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for participating through these four sessions. If you've got some questions, go ahead and enter them now. Obviously, we covered a lot today. I do want to um, answer one quick question. Somebody had asked, will the slides be available? We don't actually send out the slides. However, we do make the recording available, so that will go out in the email that I send, <coughs> excuse me, most likely to, um, tomorrow. The other thing I want to mention, just while Neil's looking through those, um, this course has been educational in, in purpose, and so we've, we've intentionally not talked about archive social 
um, just because we want this to be seen as, as an educational resource in the industry. That being said, we do get some questions um, and, and we have during this course just about what we do. So I wanna give just a quick 30 seconds while we take in any more questions. So on a high level, we work with over a thousand agencies across the country from small towns of a couple thousand people all the way up to the largest cities, Chicago, um, New York City, et cetera. And basically what we do is we help them do three things. So ensure compliance and respond to records requests. I should say easily respond to records requests. Um, we try to price this so it fits in people's discretionary budgets. So we know everybody's cash strapped and that you guys have a lot of, of good things to spend money on. So we've intentionally priced the, uh, the subscription um, to reflect that. And then finally, we, this is a cloud-based solution, so there's no IT resources required. So most customers get up and running in about 20 minutes. Um, and so, and again, I'm gonna just let Anil address uh, the group in just one second. The, um, so I do wanna just at the end of the course here, throw out two things. If what we talked about today is of interest and you just wanna learn more or see the system, see how it works, what I encourage you to go to our site, request a demo, there's a form on the site. And what we'll do is hook you up with a specialist that can talk to you about your state laws and, and, and talk to you about agencies close to you that are using our system. And, and then secondly, if you're interested in just seeing what your archive looks like, you can actually go on our site and preview your archive. And it literally takes 60 seconds. All you have to do is you hook up your Twitter account. It's two or three steps. And then you can go in and actually see what your agency's archive looks like. And it's, uh, it's, it's a feature that we found agencies have said is incredibly helpful just to understand what archiving is. So again, I'd like to encourage you um, on both of those actions. I'm gonna send out an email tomorrow. Feel free to, and, and I'll have links for this, for these actions in the email tomorrow. The other thing is if you have any questions about the course, whether it's around policy, crisis communication, what Anil talked about today, feel free to reply back to my email and um, I will either answer it myself or talk to Alex who obviously presented a couple of sessions at Neil today and we'll get you a response or get you help in your state for someone who can help with that. So with that, let me hand it back over to Neil. I, I don't know, Neil, did we get any further questions that you wanted to address? We didn't, thank you, Robert. We had, we had a good question, uh, a, a more general question about what is what is your archival process? So again, as Robert said, we do get a lot of questions at, at, in these sessions around our specific technology. So I'll, I'll touch on us, but I also want to speak uh, broadly on behalf of, of record keeping, archiving solutions in general. Um, and in general, what you're looking for is a solution that um, interfaces directly with the social network. So Many of you are social media users. You're used to log in, logging in with Facebook or logging in with Twitter. That's what you want to look for in a solution. Um, you basically can give that network permission to share your data with, with the archiving program. Um, certainly want to focus on your official pages, not your personal accounts, and, and a good archiving solution will separate those out for you. And once, once an archiving solution is connected directly to the network with your permission, it can actively archive on your behalf. And again, it varies what it does. Um, each archiving solution has its own approach on that frequency, that comprehensiveness. But the solution can essentially talk to Facebook and figure out what's happening, get the records for you in the background. So it really does require uh, minimal effort on your part. When Robert said most, most agencies get set up in 20 minutes, uh, literally our average customer is fully compliant in 20 minutes. They have all of their social media connected. So it's a really easy process and it happens behind the scenes. Okay, great. Thanks, Sunil. So if there's any last questions, go ahead and enter in. Ed. And I want to just um, throw out one other thing. If anyone listening today is in California, we're actually going to be out doing a one-day social media workshop with CAPIO, which is the California PIO Association. So we're going to be running that together in LA and the Bay Area. And on the off chance anyone here is from California, um, respond back to my email tomorrow that I send out. And what we can do, we have a couple of spots that we've reserved just for sort of friends of archive social, and we can, um, we, we can get you into those. So again, thank you for participating over the last uh, five weeks, and um, best of luck with your communication efforts. Thank you.